Hello, hello. Let's get that audio check done. Let me know if you can hear me. I kind of got a new setup as of this morning. Yeah, man. Audio's good. Excellent. That chat's moving a little faster than I can keep up with. Appreciate my moderators and my new moderators. I surprised a couple people. I don't know if they're in the chat right now. I may surprise, surprise a couple more. I know there's many of you that have been around since I had three, 300 to, to 1,000 people listening to me on a weekly basis. I know your names. Oh, we got a good one today. Got a good one. Oh, I'm just checking out, checking out the chat. You guys know I want I want, I want a few more people to get in here before we take off on this. Absolutely new way, a whole, a whole new approach to looking at calendrics. Uh, absolutely verifiable. For those of you who have Chronicon, you will be getting into it, I promise you. This is gonna this is gonna open up your mind to a whole new way of looking at fu future times to ascertain exactly what's going to unfold. It's fascinating. Listening from Boston, we've got some Massachusetts in the house. A left, a left, twenty nine thousand. Yeah, that was all. That was all recently. I mean, I've. It's crazy. That was recent. What we got in here? Six hundred and sixty people. Oh, it's growing. You guys can hit that like button. Let me know you appreciate it. You're going to get it today. I promise you, I'm going to earn that like today. Just like the last uh, the last presentation when I went really deep on Calendrix, I provided a free PDF. And I know because there's been over 1,200 downloads of that PDF. I, I look at the pod the Podia analytics. Uh, I'm, thank you guys for... for for taking the time to download that and look at it yourself. It's really astonishing material, but we're going to do that again. This presentation here, you need to be able to see, not just listen to me tell you, you need to be able to see this as well. And for those of you who have your Chronicons, the, uh, you'll be able to look it up and see all the source materials where all this data had come from. It's, 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 it's mind blowing. We are going to basically do a decode using world history just to figure out what ha what's going to happen in the year 2040? Now, we've already done it using calendrical isometrics. I've already got multiple chapters in published books showing you the, the palindromic nature of historical events and how they, they sync up and tell us, they give us a window into the future based off past precedents. We can look at mathematical antecedents and see what's going to unfold at certain times in the future. I've done this extensively with the year 2040 and 2046 in my book, Nostradamus and the Planets of Apocalypse. Further, I have two full chapters on the cursed earth period of 414 years, which is 138 times three in my book, When the Sun Darkens. I show a lot of a lot of a lot of isometric projections all over my channel, spread throughout all kinds of videos here on YouTube. So this palindromic sequencing of world events that that basically lets us know what's going to happen at a future time should not be mysterious to you. It is why those of us who follow the archaics model realize we're in a construct and we're not bothered by that. It's not it's not harrowing to us that that we're in a controlled environment. Well, yeah, this is a program. It's actually very liberating. Once you understand that we are absolutely independent of the phenomena we observe, we can observe the past and we can observe the future while we remain objective right here in the present. It's very easy to do. All the tools have all always been with us. 
So one of those great minds in the past was Firmicus Maternus. He was a great mind. He, he, uh, I, I believe it was 14 centuries ago, 14 or 15 centuries, 13 or 14 centuries ago. The man was, a, well, he was a man before his time, way more sophisticated than the church fathers of his day. He's a, uh, he knew, he knew that by studying the events of the past, we could literally construct future events. We can put them together. And for those of you who buy into the model that if we're entertaining ideas, we create them for the future, this is the difference between subjectivity and objectivity. If you fear something, then yeah, you become a participant. If you're fearless, then that means you remain objective and you can see the construct for what it is, the unfolding of phenomena that we as souls will flow through. Now, if you're going to suffer any of those repercussions of flowing through future events, it's because you allowed these things to enter into your space. You allowed them to enter into your reality by worrying, by anxiety. Yeah, we're spiritual beings. This is a great ride. This is an awesome ride. And if you're still suffering any of the dungeon programming, negative default programming of our reality, I get that. It's very hard to break free. That's my mantra, break free or die trying. It's difficult, but once you start getting the hang of it, that this isn't that this isn't a single a single event that you will do in your life, but it is a daily struggle. Once you understand that, and you realize, oh, okay, so I get it now. I'm gonna I'm gonna take two steps forward, but I'm always taking one step back. I have to. The construct's gonna push me back. It's what you do with that pushback that defines who you are. And that's what we're doing here in Archaics. We're, man, we're ignoring all this dungeon programming, all this negative stuff that's going on in social media and all these clowns out there making ridiculous claims. Listen, man, you know what? We're ignoring that. Don't care. This right here, you know, this, this is a circus. And many, many people take turns being the clown. But we don't have to, we don't have to participate. We don't. There are beautiful things happening in this world, and yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of things are nefarious and they're and they're corrupt. And all, but you know what? I'm not buy, buying into that. That's not a part of my reality anymore. I see what's going on. Just because I can observe the wallpaper and it looks like watermelons and peaches, it doesn't mean I have to taste it. It's just there for me to observe. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into this here in a few minutes after I look at this chat, but you are going to have this presentation for you to read and for you to show people and for you to be able to do this yourself. But we've gone into the isometric projections and I promise you that not one single isometric projection is anywhere in this presentation. We don't need them. We've already done them ad nauseum. We, we, we shelve that. We're done with it. Looking at the 138-year patterning of the Phoenix phenomenon throughout world history, ad nauseum, we already covered it. We're done with that. Done. Look, looking, at, looking at the prophecies of Nostradamus and the prophecies of Mother Shipton, which specifically focus on 2040. We're done with that. We're shelving it. Just for this presentation. We don't need any of that. Because I'm going to show you that all the things I've told you about May of 2040 can be seen from a totally different mathematical vantage point. Isometric projections was one. Eschatology, eschatology is another, involving multiple different personalities in the ancient past. You know what I mean? It's, it's another. The, uh, the 138-year sequencing of the Phoenix phenomenon that we've, that we've documented, that's another. But this one's totally novel. This one is not like any of its predecessors. This is a totally different way of, of showing what's going to unfold in 2040. And it's, it's pretty astonishing. I've been on a roll lately, guys. Like I told you, I told you about a month ago, I was wrestling. I was wrestling. I was releasing videos. Yeah, but I was wrestling. And, and I even told Don, you know what? I, I'm, going, I'm going through something right now. And although I'm on top of the world, all my everything's taken care of. I'm good. I'm good, guys. It's uh it was internal. Just a struggle. It's like, man, hold on, man. There's something 
I'm going in the wrong direction. I don't like this direction I'm going. I'm going in the wrong direction. I've been listening to other people, and, and I've never done that before. I've always gone my own way, even to my own detriment. I, I learned by making mistakes, and I've made a lot of them. But you know what? Something was something was wrong. And I had told Dawn, you know what? I need, I need to, I need, I need to sit back today. I need to do a, a reset and just not do anything. And uh I I need to listen to spirit because I feel like I'm uh, it wants to communicate, but I'm blocking it. I need to, and you know what? I had a breakthrough. You guys already know. Book of Job started it, and then from there. The book, the video about the first seal, and then there about the seven seals. Yeah, it's just, uh, and then this, and then this right here. Here's another one, guys. You will get the PDF. Thank you, Dr. Corey Stern. Always a pleasure. Delta Don. Yep, gas money for the road. Thank you, guys. All right. Oh man, the chat's going on. Well, we got we got over a thousand people in here. That's good. I don't know if this is a really good time to do a live video. I never really keep to a schedule. I never keep to a I I know some channels have schedules they go by so you guys can be familiar with them and all that. Dude, I I, I just guys, I don't live my life like that. I just don't live my life like that. I, I am led 100 percent by inspiration. I feel like releasing the video or doing it, it's going right there. So if it's going to be an upload, it's going to be an upload. It's going to be a short, it'll be a short. If it's going to be a live video, I just go ahead and schedule it, get ready for it, do that live video. There is no rhyme or reason or scheduling with archaics. I am just totally 100% led by things I cannot see, and but I only feel. So, And that's probably the way I'm going to continue to do this. And this coffee is great. Yeah, this is so, this is a much better this is a much better uh setup I have. You guys know I've been having some problems, but we've drilled holes in here, run run the cable all the way to the modem. So I'm not using Wi-Fi anymore. I'm direct hook up. Got a new computer screen, it's huge. I can I can see the chat really good. Yeah. The only thing I have to do is fix this audio because I'm not using this microphone right now. I have all this equipment. Cloud clarification and focus rights, and I got all this equipment, but I gotta have, I gotta have, oh, uh, somebody come over here and look at all this. Matter of fact, I was talking to Justin about it just the other day. I need to have him come over and look at. It. He's real good at that stuff. I can't figure out why. Am I using a coaster? No, I'm using this heat pad. I'm not using a coaster. I put my, I put my coffee on this. It stays hot. One of you guys donated it to me. You know, I wouldn't be able to find nothing like that in the store. Hi, Jay Hart. So, John, John, myself included, I took a bunch of them too, but thousands of pictures, guys. Thousands of pictures. John just finished the Encyclopedia Britannica for 1910, taking all these pictures, these beautiful black and white illustrations and all these places around the world. It's just amazing. Uh, he's about to start on the 1902 editions for Encyclopedia Britannica, but all these other books, man, they won't even fit on the shelves anymore, but it, but it's okay. I'm not, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm continuing to build out. One talks, New Zealand. How you doing? He was here. He was here with us. Enjoyed his stay. Guys, listen. A lot of my, a lot of my, my upcoming videos that are voiceovers where you don't have to see my face. That's when I'm going to show off the pictures from the Archaics Library. Some of these books have beautiful, the pen and ink work that was done in the 17 and 1800s is unmatched today. They did, they didn't use computers. They didn't digitize their art. These people, you, these were artists. Their proportion, perspective, it's just all, the lighting is fantastic. So you guys need to see a bunch of these pictures. I'm going to show them uh, in my videos when I do voiceovers for stuff. Hold on for dear life. <laughs> That's a good one. Of course, there's no pun intended, right, now. 
Oh man, John in the chat somewhere. Phoenix Protocol, how you doing? It's almost time to set up another uh, Discord chat. There are a lot of Dons in the chat. Hello, Jahar Lee. Sully. Sully, how long have you been with Archaics? I've been seeing you in that hat for quite a while. Quite a while, come to think of it. Mr. C, too, you've been around quite a while. I was looking at an old video and I saw you on, on our, in the chat. Greg G been around quite a while. That's right. All right, guys. Nelson Perez, you too, man. No doubt. You too. Any of those names I just named, you guys, you guys want a, a blue wrench, you let me know. Send me an email. Or say it in the chat. I'm pretty sure that. Don or one of my other moderators will catch it and let me know. I don't, I can't, I can't sit here and, I can't sit here and chase. The chat goes too fast and people want to hear this presentation. They don't want to sit here and. All right, Nelson, I just got you. I can't. Uh, Mr. C, I'm about to start this presentation. I seen Mr. C pop up. Got you, man. Don Marie Farrell, you've been here a long time too. Yeah, I don't want to leave leave you veterans out. Archaic's veterans been around a while. Let's get on with this presentation. We got 1,250 in the chat. Firmicus maternus. All right, guys. You can do your own Googling. You can do your own research on the man. It's only one quote that I'm even interested in, interested in because it would have required years. It would have required a lot of research for him to actually say what he said. It's not a light statement. It comes with a lot of weight to it. The man said, the beginning of anything was to be found out by the unfolding of historical events. You can't just write that, especially 14, 15th century, uh, 15 centuries ago, when you're being peer reviewed by everybody else who's trying to write, write and be important. And because back then they were all trying to, uh, the peerage was all trying to get uh, funding. No, that's this is what they wanted to do. They needed to find a baron, a duke, a lord, somebody in the nobility, a king, even a prince who would fund them. And this is how men did their research back then. If they were not a part of the nobility themselves and didn't come and wasn't born into money, they had to. They had to. Uh, wasn't so much. It was a sponsorship, just like today, a sponsorship. So, oh, uh, not much has changed, I guess. I guess, I mean, well, yeah, I guess things have changed because back then the sponsorships were probably a little politically mode motivated. You had to write in favor of the person that sponsored you. But like, like me, I don't really have any sponsors. I don't have any sponsors because so far every sponsorship, I've gotten good donations for archaics to keep, keep the wheels going, but I've been offered many sponsorships by large companies but they get offended when I won't push their products. And I tell them, I'm not pushing a product on Archaics. You're not going to see products on my line, on, on my, on my, dude, you're not going to see my videos. If you ever see a video interrupt my content in my videos, it's because YouTube is doing that. I've disabled all mid rolls. So, and in, and in order to keep you guys from seeing all these ads that break up these videos, I buy my music rights. I buy my all the images you see on Archaics. I pay for those copyrights. I pay for the copyrighted music, and I also pay for the video clips. Every video clip you see, because if I wasn't to to pay for those subscriptions to Shutterstock, one two three RF dot com, uh, a couple other smaller companies, uh, my, I get my music from David F uh, Fessalian. I've used a couple songs like from Grendel Dark and and uh. Max Egan by permission, but but the reason I pay for all these is because it keeps YouTube from putting 
ads in the middle of my videos. I don't, I'm not, I'm not with that. I'm with the presentation. They can put ads in the beginning of the videos so I can make a little bit of money so I can, so I can fund this lifestyle, but the middle of my videos are off limits. So I can't do that. So, uh, well, I just received notification that YouTube has shut down Square Peg's channel. Hmm. That could be for a, a, a couple reasons. Certain words. I got certain words blocked in my chat. You cannot even say them. Algor my, my little, I don't know what's going on. I'll, I'll talk to her later see what's happening. But let's see. Oh. Uh, Broke up my flow a little bit. Let me go down here and find. Uh, need to find this chat. I'm way behind on the chat. There we go. All right. Damn, square pig. I'm going to have to talk to you about that. I ain't heard anything about that. All right. So, Pharmacus Maternus had to, have, had to have had a lot of research under the belt in order to have asserted such a statement. But he's not alone. He's not alone at all. Albert Camus, some of you guys know who that is, French philosopher. He said the last pages of a book are already contained in the first pages. That's crazy. That is crazy. And then my favorite, P.D. Alspinsky, 100 years ago, guys. Future events are wholly contained in preceding ones. And if we would know the force and direction of all events which have happened up until the present moment, for example, if we knew all the past, by this we could know all the future. I got I to gotta say his name again. That's Alspinsky. This is a student of Gurdjieff, but I'm more partial to Alspinsky. I see some people talking about, you know, YouTube is is uh about their chat. I mean about uh about their censorship and all that. So guys, listen, it could be anything. Somebody else said the square peg divergence is still up. That that might be misinformation. Someone else just in the chat just said that your channel's still there. I don't know. I just know that that. The Archaics chat is monitored every day, not just by me, and it's for good reason. And it's because there are people who like to put trigger words in the chat. You know what I mean? Yeah, we 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 eliminate all that. So, so I don't know, man. We'll find out. One seventeen Gunjner said the channel was gone, but he just checking it's there now. So I don't know. That's neither here nor there. We can we can we can we can, just, we can uh, look at that later. It says the channel's there, but it's not working. I don't know. That's weird. Oh, I like how you did that Greek archaics free breaker. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of comments about we're already in the third seal about Bo, uh, um, David Nino Rodriguez had a guest named Bo Polney or something who says we're already in the third seal. Listen, guys, just use a little common sense. Just to call it a little common sense. If if the whole C narrative in January of 2020 from December 
2019 to March 2020, if that little window right there woke up the whole world, you understand? And in eschatology, this is the breaking of a seal, which is a revelation and a part of the unveiling, then you can't isolate some small particular that only affected a small amount of people and say, well, that must have been the breaking of the second seal. So we're in the third seal now, man. You can't attribute American politics to a, the breaking of a seal when it only affects Americans in a few other countries. No, the, I promise you the breaking of the second seal has not happened yet. But when it does, it's going to be a world affecting event, just like the first seal. Yeah, I mean, and I, I just feel that what the game plan. Oh. Uh, I just feel that the game plan is is very, um, it's 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 totally written out. It's totally written out. I believe they've been preparing for it. They've been funding. They've been funding it, and I think it's going down. I think it's going down. That that second horseman, the the four hundred years ago, they started mistranslating that from the Greek, and in the Greek, that's not red. <coughs> It's like a, it's like the, it's like the red yellow flames, and it's not, it's not a raging fire. The idea is not a raging fire. The, the idea is a bunch of little flames. It's not a great sword. The word "great" in Greek is not even there. It's not a great sword. It's a knife. It's a dagger. It's the, it's the weapon of the assassin. That is what the second seal is. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I'm seeing, and it's not, and it, it's not war. It's not, it's not all out war. Take peace from the earth does not kind of, it's not, it's not necessarily kind of connotes war to take peace from the earth would be like to promote terror and have thousands of fires going on from thousands of bombs and then thousands of sleeper cells unleashed on all these civilizations, all this chaos. It's not designed to conquer. It's designed to sow chaos. It's designed to take peace from the earth. Yeah, the weapon of the sword, where well, the sword would be a symbol of conventional warfare. The dagger is not. The knife is not a symbol for conventional warfare in prophetic material. It's not. What we have in the second seal is an event that's going to wake the whole world. It's like, damn, they're going to realize, whoa, all oh, this was too coordinated, too perfect. It went down too fast. It's going to affect multiple different areas all at the exact same time. Yeah, that's what it is, guys. We have, I'm not the only one that's connected these colors to Islam. I'm not the only one that, I mean, this is over a hundred years ago. It was already being talked about, about world wars, and that one of them would involve Christianity and Islam. So, yeah. But let's get back to our, we're, we're, we're entertaining tangents now. Let's get back to our, our deal. So, so we have a, like I said, absolutely independent of the Phoenix phenomenon's 138 year periodicity, which is so well documented across my channel and published books, put it aside. All the isometric patterning using totally different historical events to show what's going to happen in 2040, put it all aside. Mother Shipton, Nostradamus, and all the other eschatologists that point to the year 2040 and all the other theorists that are now coming on board uh, inferring that, yeah, it does look like 2040. They got different agendas that are dated for 2039, 2040, and 2041. Put that stuff and shelve it aside. Remember, in archaics, we don't like to cross-pollinate. We want our, our data... We want our data pure. We want our output original and precise. So what I'm going to show you now shocked the hell out of me. But what got me looking was my recent criticism of Graham Hancock. Because to me, I'm, I'm just, believe me, the man will never debate me. Ever. ever. He would be, it would be professionally, it would be a professional suicide to ever allow me to go on a big a big deal and for, for me just to ask him penetrating questions about his ideas and theories. Because I've read the man's bibliographies and I can cite nothing but his bibliographies and show that he had access to the accurate information and refused to divulge it and instead push this narrative that Atlantis is 9,600 BC. But 
since I've gone deep into that research, I've made some more discoveries about the moon count systems, not just from old books, but they're rather some pretty modern books as well that talk about all these ancient Egyptian count systems were months. I've even found more data, and I've already I've already overwhelmed you guys with references in my last four or five videos on Graham Hancock concerning this moon count system. But if the moon count system was so prevalent in ancient times, I'm like, man, there's got to be something that connects the moon and the sun that could be used as a unit of calendrical reference. There's got to be. I searched and searched and searched, couldn't find anything, but I was looking in the wrong directions. I searched everything trying to find what is it I'm missing. There's no way this 138-year patterning goes all the way 58 centuries to 2040. There's no way, there's no way that this could be confirmed isometrically. There's no way that Mother Shipton and Nostradamus could have could have could have predicted what they predicted and give, gave us the timing without there being something I'm missing. I found it. I found it. And it was something that's known to many of you. Didn't even think about looking at it because I'm not thinking in the moon count system. Somebody else brought it to my attention that the, that the solar cycle is 11.5 years. So when I started looking into it, it was 138 months. Our sun has like a heartbeat, this pulse every 138 months. But you never hear it like that from the scientific community. The scientific community is always telling you 11.5 years, solar cycle. They say sunspots are attached to it, all these. Well, anyway, I don't even care. I don't care about no NASA theories. I don't care about any astronomical theories. I don't care about anybody trying to tell me that the sun is 93 million miles away or if it's local. I'm not, none of that. I'm a simulationist. I have seen absolute historical proof that the sun in the, simu in the simulator has appeared absolutely local to many cities that were getting aired out in the 1800s, suffering all kinds of fallout from the sky when, when a city 60 miles away under the same sun had blue skies, not a cloud in the sky, and didn't suffer anything like meteorites and earthquakes and every red, the sun turning red and this fiery dragon appearing in the sky that other cities suffered. Therefore, these things are highly localized in reality can compartmentalize it, the phenomena so that people people a little further away won't see it. Absolute proof of that is 1917, the Fatima apparitions. You guys know the story. In Italy, you know the story. 5,000 something people or 75,000 people, I can't remember the second time, they're all out there waiting for these miracles to happen. These kids are talking about, they're talking about the, they're talking to the Virgin Mary and all this and all the witnesses. Tens of thousands of people saw the sun change color, change size, move erratically across the sky, and then plunge over the horizon and come back up. There is no way that the sun could have done that and the rest of the world not see it. It's not. Therefore, just like the Phoenix phenomenon, whatever is in our sky is able to compartmentalize phenomena and make sure that only certain sets of observers can see certain phenomena while it insulates that area of activity away from all other observers who have no idea that something is going on. This is why the Phoenix phenomenon is so mysterious to many new people who come to archaics. You actually bring that Newtonian physics baggage into my channel and you try to process this information from the perspective of someone who is bringing all this NASA crap, all this astronomy, all this brainwash from the scientific community. It's not true. We live in a construct, and that construct can compartmentalize phenomena to make different people at the same locations experience different things. The historical record is very clear. This has been going on for a very long period of time. So, all right, so, all right. Um, so what we have here, it should come as no surprise that 11 and a half years is 138 months. <clears throat> should be, should be no surprise. Remember, reality is like, reality is like a, like a Mandelbrot set. 130, 138 months, 
138 days. I've shown in my own bio, bionumerical, I have a video on bionumerics. In that video, I show the number of the number of days uh, of in a man's life is equal to the to the years of world history. It is the exact same construct. It's just the denominations are different. 138 days wouldn't be any different than 138 months, which is no different than 138 years. These are all. Uh, uh, and I've shown this multiple times. And we're going to go into it now because I'm going to start going in reverse from the events in world history that are closest to 2040. I am about to read to you these events in every event. You got to understand, I have eliminated, you guys know how big Chronicon is, I have eliminated over a thousand pages. A, a thousand pages of data is eliminated, and I've stuck with only those events that go back 22 centuries that are connected to 2040 by every 138 months going back in time. We are skipping hundreds of thousands of events and only focusing on those that are connected to 2040 through the solar cycle. So let's do it. And then when we're done with, when I'm done reading to you these events, I'm going to show you how how all of these pieces of holography that happened in the past are constructed into a picture that tells you what's going to happen in 2040. Firmus Matur Firmus, I mean, Firm Firmicus Maternus, P.D. Alspinsky, Albert Camus, they're all right. They're not the only ones. I've, I've cited many of them that have this. Even Albert Einstein. I've, I'm a critic to him, but you know what? Even Albert Einstein... Uh, was real big on time being a geometrical construct and therefore geometry implies patterns and that patterns have predictability. So all right. Let's do it. Drink some more coffee. All right. <clears throat> so these are the oh, these are the events that are connected to 2040 by the 138 month solar cycle. In the year 2006, UB 313 was discovered, and it was named Eris. This is a this is a unknown, formerly unknown moon or small planetoid. Now, I'm not saying space is real. I'm saying this is what is reported as being sighted in the stellosphere. Giant asteroid is discovered perpendicular to the ecliptic, traveling from north to south. Guys, this was on the news. I personally saw it, wrote it down in 2006. They reported an asteroid, and it was mysterious because it wasn't on the plane of the ecliptic. It came out of the north, passed over the ecliptic, and disappeared into the south. You can't see something coming from somewhere you don't have telescopes aimed at. It was a shock to the, to the astronomical community because they had formerly believed that nothing travels north and south across the plane of the ecliptic, perpendicular to the ecliptic. Shortly after this, you couldn't find references, references to that event. And I know why. I know why. It's absolute proof that we do not have one ecliptic. We have two. One ecliptic belongs to Sol, our sun. The other ecliptic belongs to Nemesis. So, now remember, this is all simulated. The sky is simulated, but it's simulating, it's simulating what is real somewhere else. A system that has two large gravitational bodies that have their own ecliptic planes. 2006, an earthquake in Jakarta kills 5,000 people and volcanism is reported from Mount Merapi. This is important, guys, because the amount of times the same type of event is mentioned increases its magnitude, meaning we can ascertain 
what's going to happen at a certain date in the future by the frequency of mentioning uh, of certain events at certain coordinates, which is longitude and latitude. And we're going to see that here. This gets deep. 1994. Remember, everything I'm mentioning is, is connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. 1994. Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 fragmented into 21 pieces that all slammed into Jupiter. And it was, it was the, it was the, it was all the news back then. Remember, everybody's watching the news. The explosions were larger than our own world. And remember, I'm using NASA portents. This is what they reported they could see in telescopes. Doesn't matter if it was real or not, it entered the human consciousness at that time as real. Now, Space Control Complex in Cheyenne Mountain goes online. 800,000 Africans are massacred in Rwanda in a 100 day period. That's a lot of people. That's almost a million people. It may have been over a million, but the news reported 800,000. Quakes were felt from Canada, California, all the way to South America. L.A. and Mount Merapi in Jakarta erupted, killing 60 people. That's the second time we have men the mention of, of natural disasters in Indonesia. Some of you guys have paid close attention to my Phoenix fallout predictions for 2040. What areas of the world are going to be most affected? You're going to see. Remember, this is a whole fourth different data set using a totally different method. And yet you're going to see patterns and parallels with what I told you, what I've told you guys about Southeast Asia, what's going to happen. What I, what I told you about what's going to happen to the Gulf of Mexico, specifically Texas, New York, uh, uh, South America, yeah. Totally different data set here. Continuing on, 1983, connected to 2040. Hurricane Alicia devastates Galveston. NASA launches the Iris Space Telescope that photographed comet Araki Alcock, which was the closest known comet in 200 years. The Iris telescope discovered a Neptune-sized body at the edge of our system, and it made world news. This was in 1983. Six months later, it spotted it again, published the telemetry and the, and the, and the digitized pictures of this body at the edge of the system, and Jet Propulsion Laboratory announced on world news that they had discovered Planet X. Three months later, silence from the scientific community. Zechariah Sitchin reported a lot about this. That was 1983. Continuing on the solar cycle, 1971. Astronomers discover a radioactive burst from the region of Cygnus 1, indicating black hole activity. For those of you who don't know, the Cygnus Rift is one of the most mysterious places in the night sky. The Cygnus Rift is extremely black. Astronomers claim that they have seen through their telescopes stars disappear behind the rift, meaning it must be local. But whatever it is, light can't penetrate it. We can't see through it. It's called the Cygnus Rift. It's like a tear in space. In this year of 1971, India invades Pakistan. Continuing on the solar cycle uh, from, 19, for, from 2040 is 1948. The state of Israel begun an Arab League nations attack, Palestinian genocide, mass international migration to Israel begins. Remember what Nostradamus said about the migrations after 2040? That wasn't me. Nostradamus said that. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. 1937 is connected to 2040 by, by, by the 11.5 year solar cycle. 1937, Hitler asked the British government if he can relocate the Jews in Germany to Palestine. because, And he had to ask them for permission because of the British mandate by, by General Balfour uh, uh, of Britain. He couldn't just move them. Uh, the British government denied him and said he had to keep 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 those people there. So 
Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in 1937 in San Francisco is open to is open to traffic. In Texas, 300 people were burned alive when a gas explosion at a school killed all the students and all the teachers. 300 people died. It's one of the worst tragedies in the state of Texas up until that point. Also in 1937, asteroid Hermes passes very, very close, close to our world. And a typhoon. Remember, I've showed you guys. Typhon. Typhoon. Same word. Typhoon is Typhine, the phoenix. But typhoon at Hong Kong kills 10,000 people. And in 1937, the Japanese-Chinese War, it's called the Sino-Japanese War, begins. This is something you're going to see a lot of. Japan, Japan figures very prominently, prominently in these calendrics. And if you live in Japan, you had better pay attention to this video. This is conclusive. 1925, connected, connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. The great eclipse of New York City. Guys, I got, I got to tell you about this. We, I should... I got to tell you about this. Okay. In 1970, I mean, in 1925, I don't know why there hasn't been more about this on television and magazines and newspapers and all that. But in 1925, it was, a, it, was a, it was an eclipse. So there's nothing really mysterious about it, but it was like a total eclipse. New York City, populated with so many people, was absolutely silent. The writers of the time remarked about it in the newspapers like, wow, they had never heard the city so quiet. It was, it was an eclipse and the city was cast into darkness. Everybody was quiet. And the telephone company in New York reported that for 10 minutes, there was not one single call made in the city of New York. They had never seen anything like that. It was in 1925. So this is connected to the Phoenix of 2040. In 1914, the volcano Sakurajima in Japan erupts. World War I begins. Paramount Pictures in Hollywood is established. All in 1914, connected by the solar cycle to 2040. Mass migrations of Europeans to North, yeah, to North America, Australia, and South Africa, and the Panama Canal officially opens. Remember, guys, when we get to the bottom of this list, we're going to deconstruct this and reconstruct it into a, into a picture of what unfolds in 2040. So, 1891 is connected to 2040 by the by, by the solar cycle. 1891, the automobile with a combustion engine is made for the first time, and a meteorite over Italy is seen, followed by a rain of stones. 1879, connected to 2040 by the solar cycle, a great obelisk from Egypt is transported all the way to New York City. 1868, connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. For eight days, Peru is afflicted by earthquakes, tsunamis, flooding, storms, and strange lights in the sky. I guess that's the Meiji or Meiji Restoration ends the rule of the shogunate in Japan. Tokyo becomes the new capital. Those of you in Japan, please pay attention. Please pay attention. 1833 is connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. Most spectacular meteor shower on, on record. North America, across New North America. In the Pacific, the island of Tuanaki completely vanishes with all of its inhabitants. 1822, connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. Earthquake in Java and volcan volcanic in, uh, eruptions last for five hours, killing 4,000 people at least. Again, we have Indonesia. 
1799 is connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. Alessandra Volta invents the first battery. 1787, connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. It is the first Continental Congress convened to establish the United States federal government. 2040 is connected by solar cycle to 1776, the Declaration of Independence, and New York City is attacked by the British. 1730 is connected to the to 2040 by the solar cycle. Earthquake activity begins for five years in the Canary Islands, and noxious gases are released from the ground that kill wildlife. Earthquake at Hokkaido, Japan, kills 137,000 people. 1707. 1707 is connected to 2040 by the, by the sun cycle. The UK formed from England, Scotland, and Wales. Volcanic activity on Santorini. This is in the middle of the Mediterranean. A tsunami appears off the coast of Wakayama, Japan, and spectators report that there is a large luminous ball of light inside the tidal wave. Where have we seen that before? Are you guys paying attention to this? This is 1707. And yet, the tsunami, I showed a picture, I showed the, I showed the video on my channel of a white apparition, a white ghostly thing coming out of the water and going through buildings that was very specter-like when the tsunami hit Japan in 2014. Also, I just did a short earlier today, Unusual Phenomena, William Corliss book. Remember, in that book, he reports tidal waves had glowing orbs inside of them, just like the inside of tornadoes. These little foo fighters, these little willow wisps, they're intelligent and they seem to create disastrous phenomena. Oh, they've also been seen uh, triggering volcanoes. That's right. <clears throat> 1707. 1684, in the month of May, Europeans see objects in the sky that are reported to be comets. 1672 AD. Astronomer Cassini reported a large object near Venus, seen from the Paris Observatory, and a comet is seen by Europeans. These are two different incidents in the same year. 1661, connected to 2040 as well, like all these others. Europeans report the appearance of a comet. In Worcester and Hereford, England, flames are seen in the sky during an earthquake. Also reported by William Cordes. 1638, Japan closes its borders to all European nations. This is in the year 1638. They got tired of that, that, that East India Company. They got tired of all the British, uh, the British and the Catholic intrigues. The Vatican was always trying to get their hand in there as well. 1580 AD, Sir Francis Drake completes circumnavigating the world. I think he just went in a circle. But a uh, comment reported by Europeans, Pope declares himself to be Lord God. Powerful Spanish armada is wrecked by storm off the, the English coast. In 1569, Mercator published his modern map in longitudinal and latitudinal grids, and the Jews are expelled from all Papal states. This is back when the Vatican, before the Vatican became a captured operation. For those of you who don't know, the Vatican has been captured. That's why they wear those small hats now. But prior to that, the Vatican was a staunch en en enemy uh, of, of uh, these people. 1534. The Society of Jesus, you know them as the Jesuits, founded by papacy as an international spy assassin network loyal to the Pope. This is all connected to 2040 by the sun cycle. 1431, three papal armies are defeated by the Bohemians. 
This is after two earlier armies were sent a couple years earlier, and they got their asses kicked as well. The Bohemians were not playing, and they did not like the Pope. And the Pope lost every army he sent after those people. These are the Bohemians. In the same year, Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. In the same year that Vlad Dracul of the Order of the Dragon was born in Wallachia. 1419, also connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. 1419, epidemic in the Fujian province, China, kills 174,000 people. It lasts for three years. In the year 1408 AD, Sigismund of Hungary reforms the Societas Draconis, known as the Order of the Dragon. 1362, England be begins opening Parliament in English rather than French. Remember, since the days of the Mormons, they had, they had been a copper captured operation. The Norse Goth expedition of King Magnus of Norway finds North America largely empty, and the few natives were hostile. Uh, this is the background story to the Kensington Runestone which was left and found in the roots of a great tree here in North America. It shows the Kensington runestone is, is shows that the Norse and Goths were, came here by order of King Magnus of Norway, basically to survey North America. And they, they, they describe everything they saw and how they got attacked by Indians and all that. So 1316 AD, the height of the great European famine. Cannibalism is reported. These are the days when the euphemism long pig was created. It's a pretty dark part of our history. 1293 AD. Earthquake in Kamakura or Kamakura, Japan, kills 20,000 people, and Roger Bacon died in this year. Another famous, another famous, absolutely genius into this. He's a genius soul, Roger Bacon. 1281, Mongol Chinese fleet of the Khans is wiped out in a typhoon. I believe this one, this was the second one. It happened, it happened a few years before that, too. The Khans tried to take Japan. Both times they were wiped out in these really bizarre storms. Yeah, it's crazy. It wasn't Japan's time. In the year 1270 AD, connected to 2040 by the Phoenix Cycle, the Eighth Crusade begun. It was a total waste of life. Total waste of life, and it didn't result in anything. Except enriching the church a little bit. So, remember, we got, we got another page to get through. These are all connected by the solar cycle to the year 2040. We're going to reconstruct all this as soon as I'm done reading this list. Excuse me. 1258 AD. Babylon is destroyed called Baghdad, by Huliga Khan and his Mongols. This year happens to also be the end of the 11th Bactin of the Mayan Long Count, meaning 1,584,000 days of the 13 Bactins is already over, started in 3113 BC. 1247 AD, Muslims retake Jerusalem. 1201 AD, the Jews are granted special privileges by the Normans. This is throughout France and uh, the Norman holdings in England. 1178 AD, something very strange happened in the sky. The moon was reported to be on fire. Then it started throbbing. Then it grew dark. We're not talking about a lunar eclipse. Something very unusual happened. This is the year 1178. It's connected to 2040 by the solar cycle. In 1086 AD, the Domesday Book, begun by the Normans. This is a continuation of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. 994 AD, Toltec King Huamak II ascended the throne, a very unpopular ruler. Strange omens were seen in the sky. Starvation began, plague, and it was followed by war. 902 AD, extraordinary meteor shower over Europe. 856 AD, 
earthquake at Corinth, Greece killed 45,000 people, and an earthquake at Damgan, Persia killed 200,000 people. 787 AD, the Second Council of Nicaea established that idolatry is acceptable and will be practiced by the Catholic Church. The papacy then altered the Ten Commandments to justify the change. This is in the year 787. In the year 775 AD, the Royal Frankish Annals report Frankish victory over the Saxons in a war of conversion. The Franks were trying to force the Saxons to convert to Catholicism. 672 AD, Arab Navy, having failed to take Alexandria, Egypt, then turns and attacks Constantinople. 638 AD, the Caliph Omar attacks and takes Jerusalem. 637 AD, Arab armies conquer Damascus and Tessaphon. Arab armies invade and defeat Persia. 626 AD, the Avars attack Constantinople, but they cannot breach its walls. 614 AD, the Shah of Persia took Jerusalem from Christian control. Jews working with the Persians then had the entire Christian population butchered. 568 AD, the Lombards, which means long beards, the Lombards pass over the Alps and invade Italy. They founded the Kingdom of Lombardy. 534 AD, a worldwide famine. Skies begin to clear after a 12-year canopy of clouds from volcanic activity. The Dark Age begins. 488 AD. Goths invade Italy, sacking villages and cities, unopposed. 476 AD, a Dovacar, the German, leads the Germans into Italy. It's the fall of Rome. Rome's last king was named Romulus, and he was a young man. For those of you who don't know, Rome's first king was named Romulus as well in 753 BC. 442 AD, also connected to 2040 by the solar cycle, as with every other event I've, I've just read. The Huns spent nine months attacking European cities. Pope Leo I declared that Christ gave supreme authority of Christendom to Rome. 258 AD, Pope Stephen I claims the Church of Rome is supreme of all the churches. But the Roman Emperor Valerian was taken aback by how powerful the church was becoming, and he ordered the execution of all Christian bishops, priests, and deacons. 120 AD, Rome annexes Britain by treaty, but it cannot take it. This is the reason why Hadrian had to build the wall. 62 AD, Violent quakes destroy many buildings around Herculaneum and Pompeii in, in Italy near Vesuvius. All right, we're almost done with the list. 51 AD, Pliny records that over Italy, a strange sun appeared with the normal sun. Rome conquers the Britons. 64 BC, also connected by the 11.5 year, 138 month solar cycle to 2040. During the Ferri festival, a comet appeared and the moon darkened. 169 BC, our last event. Antiochus IV, Epiphanes, which means I am God or I am the appearance of God. He attacks Jerusalem and sacks the temple. So, that's the list. That's the list. These are the historical effects that are connected by the 138-month solar cycle, all going through history, 2,200 years to 2040. Now, my Archaics veterans, you already know the picture that Mother Shipton painted. You know the picture that Nostradamus painted. You know the picture that the 138-year Phoenix periodicity paints for what's going to happen in 2040. 
You've seen what the isometric projections paint. These are four different methods of seeing the same thing. This is the fifth I'm giving you right now. I mean, there's other ways. There's other ways to see it too, such as Hollywood programming. You know, uh, predictive programming. I'm just talking about the ones I focused on my channel. Archaics veterans, you already know. So what I'm about to read to you now should take on deeper meanings for you that are very familiar with my material. Because what I'm about to read only comes from those historical events and dates that I just read to you. So without further ado, we need to get on to this. <clears throat> Reducing these historical events all connected in multiples of 138 months to their lowest common denominators, as well as considering the frequency of times the same events are referenced, but at different years in history, these events construct for us the single year of 2040. Remember, future events are wholly contained in preceding ones, and these pieces can be assembled to build a picture of a future time period. So, I need you to see what I'm talking about, because this is, this is what, you have, what I haven't showed you. In the course of my research, I didn't just go by the 11.5 solar cycle. I mean, I did. The events are all on that cycle, all, all on that cycle. But I also showed orders of magnitude in my own research. And what I'm going to show this closer. What I mean is, is you already know the cursed Earth period is 414 years, or in 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 the days of a man's life, it's 414 days, which is 138 times three. The Phoenix cycle of the ancient world was 552 years, hidden by the Pope and the Catholic Church in the year 526, when they invented the Anno Domini calendar. I've showed that in a prior video. 552 is 138 times four. So I did the same thing here. Not only are these events that I read 138 months apart, but many of them are 414 months apart, and many others are 552 months apart. So we have this layering of the Phoenix holography. It's like the Mandelbrot set. It's the same units, just different magnitudes. So on the, on the right margin, you see the circles. You can see the circles here in the right margins. Those circles indicate that that's just a 138-month patterning. But if you see a black circle, it's blacked in, that's 400. There's my key right there. That's 414. That's the cursed earth. That means it's a higher magnitude. But if you see the triangles, these triangles, here's one. Here's one up here. There's my legend where my finger is. That's 552. These, these are my orders of magnitude. And I even wrote it out here. Orders of magnitude show me these same events were, were these same events are showing up on just the 138. Then the 414, which is 138 times three, are other events, but they're only hitting certain areas. Then the big ones, 552, the Phoenix cycle. So if you're in Japan and you have any intentions on staying there, you need to pay attention to this video because according to the orders of magnitude, it's a very unwise decision. So let's go ahead and read what this entire output shows. And remember, you guys will have the PDF. It's soon. The PDF's already been made. It literally takes me five minutes to upload it to Podia, and I'm going to give it to you guys for free just like I did my last video. So you can have all this data. Oh, and the beautiful little thing, little thing at the end. You're going to love that. All right. Here it is, guys. Reconstructing every event that I just read to you and applying the orders of magnitude and the frequency of appearances of the same events in the same locations. This is what we have. In the year 2040, a gigantic mystery body is reported to be seen approaching and there is heightened activity at Cheyenne Mountain. 
Increased radioactivity is reported from the sky. A comet is reported as well as another mystery body located near Venus. A world war is occurring involving India, Pakistan, China, Japan, European nations, and Italy. Arab nations attack Israel and control Mediterranean. Genocide in Africa. Jews are expelled from many countries. Asian invaders flood Middle East and take Baghdad, Babylon, as well as make inroads into Europe. Huge objects block out the sun, moving perpendicular to the ecliptic from north to south as a great darkness brings silence to New York City. Spectacular meteorite showers seen internationally. The moon appears to burn and then go dark. Then the object crosses the sun and appears as a second sun. New York as the new Egypt is vanished. Fleet of ships destroyed in the Atlantic storms. Watery destruction of Galveston and Texas coasts. Infrastructure, destruction, deaths across Texas. End of Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Hollywood destroyed, ruined. U.S. federal government ends as a controlling authority. Quakes from North and South America. Mexico sees strong phenomena in, strange phenomena in the sky before starvation, plague, and war. Panama Canal is destroyed. Peru suffers quakes over a week with tsunamis, flooding, storms, and sky phenomena. Quakes in England during fiery sky fallout. UK government ends as a controlling authority. Canary Islands has quakes starting for five years and poison gases killing, killing wildlife. Italy suffers stones from the sky. Volcano at Thera quakes in Italy. Quakes in Greece with a large death toll. Quake in Iran with enormous loss of life. Volcano quakes in Indonesia, Jakarta, and Java all destroyed. Huge naval fleet in the Pacific is lost in storms. Watery destruction of Hong Kong. Plague in China begins with massive deaths. Pacific islands sink into the ocean, drowning inhabitants. Quake in Japan, massive death toll. Tsunami strikes Japan, attended by unusual phenomena, attended also by volcanic destruction. Government of Japan ends. Tokyo is destroyed. Japan goes internationally silent. End of oil-dependent technology, engines. Batteries are no longer manufactured. Supply runs out. Americans flee to Europe and Mediterranean. Famine in Europe. European migration armies penetrate Italy. Israel is filled with newly arriving people from all over the world. Now, my archaics veterans already know the center of movement is the Great Pyramid. It is the Axis Mundi, where this entire world shifts. It doesn't matter if you think it's a globe or if you think it's a flat disk. It's the effect is the exact same. North, Central, and South America will be moved 30 degrees south. It's going to destroy half of Texas when Texas goes underneath the Gulf of Mexico, because the water of the Gulf of Mexico will not be able to move faster than the land mass, is, land mass is pushed. On the opposite hemisphere, whether it's a flat disk or a globe, China is getting shoved to the north with Japan. I don't... There's probably not no Japan or Hawaii or any of that there after that. Australia takes the place of North Northern uh, Indonesia and Japan. Australia becomes prime real estate. Not only Australia, but Australia today is huge, but it will probably be twice as big when this goes down in 2040, because there's going to be a huge shift. That whole area, that whole area is going to going to be upheaval and shoved north as it goes over what's known as the equatorial bulge. Look, on a flat plane, the equatorial bulge is a ring comes out, and that ring makes a lot of sense of the cycle of floods that have afflicted our world. 
Remember, I have a video called 1871 Cyclical Flood Theory, where this scientist in the 1800s was smashing uh, Ice Age theory, saying it's all wrong. It's all cyclical floods. And he even explained the mechanism of how the oceans of the southern hemisphere come north because of a shift in the crust. A slight, a slight shift sends all the waters from the outside to the inside. Thousands of years later, that shift pops back up and all the waters on the inside go back to the outside. And this, this is a cycle that he documented and he shows a tremendous amount of, of data for. I have the video if you want to watch it. So it makes sense to me. Anyway, we have, we have here... We have here painted a picture of the year 2040 that's totally independent of all my prior research. And yet, is it? Is it? It's still patterned after the number 138. It's just the solar cycle of 11.5 years. Patterned in 138 year, year 414 and 552 year uh, uh, cycles and epicycles. So we have an entirely different data set looking at, looking at, the history of the world kaleidoscopically, looking at it from a different mathematical perspective, literally produces the exact same data. So the, the, data, the exact same output. So we need to pay attention here. We need to see, there's a, there's a lot to unpack in this. There's a lot to unpack in this and apply to all the other Phoenix output. So I will let you guys do that. You guys can have your own opinions about this. This this was something that took days to put together. Chronicon is not easy to go through. I had to go through all that, figure it all out, because I can't make mistakes, because I know many of you, many of you go in and look at the things I've done. I can't make any mistakes on this list. These things had to have happened at these times. I had to get these dates right. So, yeah, Don's been watching me. I've, I've had charts out, fold out, Chronicon, looking at my computer, looking at my tablet, making sure everything's right before I did this presentation, because this is deep. This is a whole new way of looking at the future, and we can actually apply this in multiple different dimensions of arithmetic. Let me explain. So we have uh, a totally different way, way of looking. Check this out. First of all, 893 years before 2040 was the year 1147. In I'm gonna I'm gonna explain the relevance. In 1147 A.D., Christians lose a battle for Jerusalem in the Second Crusade. How would that be connected to the year 2040? Why? Why is 893 years even relevant? It's not divisible by 138. But let me tell you what it is divisible by. In a different dimension of arithmetic, we can take the Phoenix cycle of 552 years. And we can multiply it by phi, the golden mean, 1.618, because 552 times 1.618 is exactly 893 years. 893 years before 2040 shows us that there was a war for Jerusalem, just like we see in these, in these, in these other patterns. Again, the year 1607, it is 433 years before 2040. 433 is not divisible by 138, but in another dimension of arithmetic, it is. Because 433 years, <clears throat> excuse me, is 138, the number of the phoenix, times pi, 3.14. 138 times pi is 433 years before 2040. And in, this is 1607. Why is it relevant to 2040? Because in 1607, it was the very first English permanent, permanent English settlement in North America. It's the very first one. And what happens in 2040? In North America starts emptying out. This is all my other, all my other research tells you about this. Mass migrations. Same thing Nostradamus said. It's going to be a lot of my herds of people leaving, leaving. Going across Europe, get, getting the hell away. Everybody's going back to the lands of their ancestors' nativity. Everybody's trying to get back toward the Axis Mundi, the center. Because all the center of movement is right there in Egypt, the Great Pyramid. So the safest places in the world is North, e is North Africa and all the way up through the Levant to Syria. From Syria and Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, uh, Saudi Arabia, right there. That's the center of motion for the world. 
the least amount of tectonic, the least amount of earthquake damage. The further you go out from the center, the more damage. Yeah, the more natural disasters, the more volcanism, earthquakes, tsunamis. Yeah, it's more the more chaos. So people are going back toward the center. And in, and in so doing, what do we see? We saw genocides. We saw wars. We saw some people can't make it. They're not crossing over. We have piracy. Everything in the old world comes back just like that. Infrastructure collapses. Now batteries are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, because you're not. No one's manufacturing batteries anymore. Electrical grids are down. There is no more oil refineries in operation. Now, while all this is going on the surface, all these things do exist in the underworld. Because the underworld is full of cities. It's full of cities and corridors and lockdown facilities. Cheyenne Mountain is connected to. Cheyenne Mountain is a symbol that represents the entire underground infrastructure. Yeah, those people will be surviving quite nicely, except those few facilities that are in the wrong geographical location, and they get shoved a mile or two down further. You know, it's, it's called subsidence. And we've seen that happen, just like upheaval, just like the cities of Tiwanaku and Pumapunka and uh, Lake Titicaca. They were shoved 14,000 feet above sea level. So at the same, and, they, and that was done in minutes. So it can be, believe me, it's. It happens. So in another order of arithmetic, another dimension of arithmetic, we see this. But look, 1776 is 84 years to the year 1860. So what do we have here? We have United States declaring its independence. 84 years later, the United States independence is threatened by the war between the states, the Civil War. The Because in 1860 was a motion for secession. States were going to break away. Started a whole war. 84, 84 years times pi, 3.14 is 263.76 years. So we just simply add July 4th, Independence Day, July 4th, 1776, plus 84 times pi, 263.76 years, and we get exactly, precisely. 2040.4, the year 2040 in the month of May. So, yeah, it's crazy, guys. Those are other, those are other, they're, they're on the PDF. You'll, you, they're at the bottom of the PDF. You can share those with people. So it, even in other, in, even in other dimensions of arithmetic, we can verify what, what basically was going to unfold in certain, certain years in the future. We're only focusing on 2040. I've done it. I've done an equal amount of research for 2046, but in 2106, but this video is about 2040 and showing a fifth data set that's completely independent of anything else I've ever published in my books or on my channel. So, and this is a scientific, this is a scientific cycle, 11.5. So the solar cycle, but there is one thing puzzling here. The only puzzling part to me are the facts that I can't seem to fit in. So I'm not going to practice exclusions. I've included everything. But there's three items here. I just don't know. Do these three happen before the Phoenix in May of 2040 or after? They happen in 2040. I just don't know when. And this is the Pope declares himself to be God. The next one is... Jesuits are either destroyed or they are empowered. And the next one is a member of the Order of the Dragon rises to power. So I don't know, guys. This I'm not even going to try to pretend to, to fit that into the narrative anywhere. I just don't know. Don't. So that I don't know. So it's that's my presentation. That's my presentation, guys. And uh Nelson Perez, what is the order of the dragon? Look, the, the, it's called Societas Draconis. Throughout European history, uh, different nobles have revealed themselves to be a part of that order. Vlad Dracul, his father, was in the Societas Draconis. We don't know a whole lot about it. It was a secret, it was a secret order, but it was anti-papal. It was, it was completely against the church. And uh, I don't know much about them. I don't, 
I, I believe the dragon is a turnoff for a lot of people. They automatically assume that that an order that called himself would be satanic or nefarious. But these are just the labels that were the, that the papacy put on these people. No, I don't believe that. Just like the snake has always been demonized by the church. But no, in ancient times, it was a noble symbol. I mean, even the ancient Egyptians had the cobra. And it was the, 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 the interpreter of secrets, the speaker of omens, you know. Just like the ancient Danan, uh, an offshoot of the Phoenicians, you know, they, they were the people of the serpent. Uh, uh, later called the Tuatha Dé Danann of ancient Ireland. Their, their symbol was the serpent. It was on their sails. They had these dragon ships. There, you know, there's nothing evil about these people. They were, they were all. Uh, it was, just, it was just their symbol, I guess. I don't know. It's, uh, I just don't, I just don't have that e evil connotation. I don't see that when I, when I read the historical material. That's, I see no evidence of it. What I see is church programming. Uh, a lot of a lot of the Babylonian priesthood programming bled off into the later Roman and Catholic churches. It's uh it's, it's there because the Babylonians were the one that was really big. The Babylonians were really big on demonizing uh, a lot a lot of these symbols that were were uh, didn't have those original meanings. Uh, sort of the serpent didn't have an evil evil meaning in the beginning at all. So yeah, a lot of this is a lot of this is not conclusive, guys. My research is really designed, as I've been stating from the very beginning, for other people to pick up, light that torch, and run with it. Yeah, it's not conclusive. I, I'm never going to stop producing material because I have a lifetime of it. I'm never going to stop. But I can't focus all my energy on, on one thing. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hit it and move. I got too much to, I got too much to reveal. I told, I tell you guys all the time, hey, Grendel Dark, I tell you guys all the time, man, it's, I got 500 more videos than me and I'm not, it's just a joke. I really, I have unlimited videos. It's just, I just, there's, I have research notes I hadn't even got to yet. So you got more and more of these coming, but uh, I appreciate you guys' participation. I think my next live video it's going to be strictly Q&A across the board. I have a lot of new um, people coming to the channel, and I would like to spend about a two-hour session just catching them up. And I think, I, I think I'm think i going to wait two, maybe three days. We're going to go live again, but it's just going to be strictly Q&A before I start going in, into these deeper presentations. Oh, I do have some more videos in the next couple of days coming out. But as far as live videos, it's the, I think the next one needs to be Q&A. Unless the spirit just takes over, man, just has me do something else. I don't know. I mean, I'm calling that right now. It's Q&A. Oh, Victoria Z, I know you're going to read those notes. Yeah, I already know. And probably blow up my email. Euthanasia, I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Hey, Ryad. Carol Herring, Truth Seeker. Do I need, I always post the live about 24 hours in advance. Are you, Carol, are you saying that I need to do a, a community post announcing the live videos? Carol, I'll be in New Mexico pretty soon too. Don and I are going to pass through New Mexico. If you're still over there. Okay. Our, okay. Our case community post would be great. Okay. I didn't know that. They were, I thought you guys got notif notified from the lives just for me doing a live posting it 24 hours in advance. I didn't know the community post was the only way I could really get notified. That's new to me. Decoding with Cody. Yeah, man, that's what it's for. Run with it. Get these PDFs I offer are free. Get the PDFs, run with it. Believe me, you'll find a whole lot, you'll find a whole lot more than I did. Yeah, we'll do that live. We'll do the live real quick. All right, Carol. I don't want, well, I'm not doing a Q&A right now. As a matter of fact, 
I know I'm a big boy, but I've been drinking too much coffee and I got a potty. I got to go. I really appreciate appreciate the donations. Appreciate the uh, y'all hitting that like button, sharing the video, and uh, give me give me ten minutes. And in the in the description box and the pinned comment, you'll have a link for a free download of, of this entire data set that I just provided, and the interpretation at the end, and the, all of it's in there. Even the, even the 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 other dimensions of arithmetic examples of how we can how we can look at historical events and ascertain what's going to happen in, in certain years in the future and what they apply to. All that's in this PDF. Give me about ten minutes. <clears throat> okay, what does Joan of Arc have to do with it? She may not have anything to do with it, but in the human, co in the collective, burning people at the stake was something that the authorities and the church worked together on for malcontents and dissidents and, and people that they, that they feared their power over the people. So as applied to 2040, we're looking, we're looking at the removal of the police state infrastructure we have that would allow for those type of situations where people are being killed, burned at the stake uh, a lot more easily. Today, today you, you understand, you put somebody on death row today, they don't get killed for 22 years. They just sit in a cell until they're old and then finally they, they, they get the needle. Yeah, that's how death row works now. It takes 12 to 25 years to actually die if you get sentenced to death like in Texas, because all the appellate procedures and all that. But what I'm saying is, is to interpret that right there would basically be uh, a, a return to the guillotine type punishments in 2040. So yeah, but I got to use the bathroom, guys. I'm sorry, but I've been I've been drinking too much coffee, and I want to get that PDF out because uh, people want people want to run with that, and I want to let them. And also, for those of you who haven't taken taken advantage of it, I've got several free PDFs on Podia. So when you go get when you click on the Podia to get this download, go go look at all the stuff. There's a lot of free PDFs in there to, to download. Yeah, one talks. Thank you guys. Phoenix Protocol. Send me an email, man. We need to set up a Discord chat. Other than that, guys, I gotta go. I love you. I'm sorry for catching out earlier. I just wanted to get my presentation done. And I'm still, I'm, I'm already working on another video. So just got to do it. I'm about to type in love you guys and go. <laughs> yeah, man. Because I got to party. Laters.